the Mekansuras, the so-called Mekansuras, which is where all these Moses stories, all the Bible stories are in the Mekansuras, um, they don't even mention um, Mecca or, or Muhammad even. Um, so th there's no indication at all that this guy was in Mecca, but you've got all these, he's clearly in an area where people know the Bible stories because he's telling Telling you, Bible story. There's no indication of him being in Mecca, bro. There's a whole historical and a biographical indication. You have remnants. Yeah, not not in the Quran. So and you deny you, you deny that the Prophet Muhammad is in Mecca. But you deny the Quran. Why would you care if it's in the Quran? If the Quran said a thousand times over, "Hey, Muhammad A.S. son was in Mecca," you would just be like, "Oh, it's another story. He just made it up." No, he but, just said himself that yeah. he's in Mecca, and now he's in Mecca. Wait. When you when you read it, there are certain it get, the the Quran does contain information, and the information that's what it's telling you is he's in an area in the north of Arabia, where where Syriac was widespread, where people knew knew the knew the stories from the Bible, whether they were Christians or Jews or or whatever, they they were familiar with these stories, and he's just reciting stories that he's heard. Frank, I think I think you should go and write an academic book and see how far you get with it, because your history is really muddled up. Oh, not at all. You, you, you're coming with some new stuff. So go and no, write no. an academic book. And that, there are references. <clears throat> and let's see how far are... you get with it. Okay, listen. I'm going to bring Frank on. I'm, I'm going to eat something. So I'm going to leave you to Frank for a bit. It's been a while since Frank's been here. Get ready. You ready for Frank? I don't know. Yeah. It, for it. yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> um, no, I'm just disappointed actually that I don't get to speak to Hamza. See, um, you just missed them. My, my, my thing is, I, I've been, I, I went on EF Dower a lot before and had a lot of interactions with, with Hamza, and that was where I was defending the gospel. And I wasn't allowed to attack the, the Quran then because it was all about the Gospels and New Testament, defending that. But now, like, Hamza sends out this challenge to come and um, attack Islam, <laughs> like, like challenge Islam. And every time I do, he runs away. He, he shuts me down. But the thing that I've been finding is, as I read the Quran, the more I read it, I just find there are so many stories which are from the Bible, but corrupted. They, they're changed. So, um, like, for example, you've got, uh, and this is the, the craziest one, I reckon, is the Solomon stories, which are in Sur Surahs 27 and 34, where um, you've got Solomon, who's a character in the Bible, just he's a, a very wise king, but in the Quran, he has talking birds and jinns. There's, um, uh, you've got uh, the myths about Dul Karnain, which is based on the Alexander story. Uh, that's not from the Bible. Um, there's stories about David, which have been, been changed. And the are, you Christian, is, are you Christian, Frank? Sorry, I've, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. The, the latest what I've found is you've got the Moses stories that um, it's really surprised me that the Moses story and Exodus is kind of repeated seven times. Um, in in those, it's in like Surah 7, 10, 20, 26, 27, 28, and, and 40. And six of them, they're all more or less telling. Uh, condensed versions of Exodus. They have there's some overlap between them, but some of them they have different parts of Exodus. But they're all basically c confirming what's in Exodus, except for Surah 40, where it's almost a completely different story, where Moses hardly says anything, and you've got there's a secret believer who does all the talking, and he he talks like a Muslim. He seems like he's read the Quran. He he he's representing things, so he's doing all the talking. And it's just a totally different story. Like, it, uh, what I'm seeing is Muhammad is just, he's heard stories and he's retelling them. And every time they're different and he's making stuff up. I, I can, yeah, how, how you say this is from God, I, I, I can't understand how you could possibly put that argument forward. Yeah, I got a question for you. What language is he hearing these stories in? Um, probably from, well, we don't know what he heard them in, but there was a, there were a lot of there was a lot of Syriac around. Like Syriac was the the language of um, it was used in a wide part of Arabia. That was the it was the language that stuff was written in because Arabic wasn't written at that stage. But 
either he was hearing the Syriac and he, he was, you know, bilingual, or somebody else was telling him these stories from, that they they circulated in Syriac. And okay, it, even the way he starts stories, very often he says, you now have you, you know, do you recall this or that? So he's talking to an audience that's familiar with these Bible stories. So wait, but but what were the what what was the original language of these stories? If he's hearing it from somewhere, where where is he getting it from? Um, well, in Arabia, they they were being circulated in Syriac. So the stories are from someone who is uh, who like who is where is the origin of this stuff? Because here's where I'm I'm what I'm trying to follow here. You're basically saying. That the Prophet Salam was basically like a PhD in multiple languages, and he just somehow all of a sudden put a bunch of stuff together and what? No, not at all. Um the Syriac was widely used. So, like a lot of people in would have been bilingual. So you're saying and, he's bilingual? Well, not he, not necessarily he. But um, the stories, like people knew the stories. When he, like so many of the, the story that they, they start off with, remember such and such about Prophet Moses, you know, Moses did this, that, the other. And he's clearly talking to people that know these stories. Well, how do you figure that? Well, just the way he's talking, that he can just suddenly start talking about Moses and he doesn't have to introduce who he is. Like in, in the seven tellings, there's only one uh, which starts from the the, um, the beginning, I think it's sort of 20, which starts with Moses' birth and how the people were oppressed, how he was born, how his mother put him in the in the Nile and so on. That's a, that's in one of them. I think I think that's in I think it's in sort of 20. But um, the earlier if, if people heard the earlier ones, they wouldn't know who this Moses was that he's talking about. But clearly his audience if, knew who Moses was. Whether they knew who he was or not, why why would that change the the moral of the story or the right. lesson that take, we take from the story. And I'm, I'm still not following how you're linking that uh, an unlettered person who is uneducated can somehow hear a bunch of different stories from multiple languages or bilingual people. Yeah, anyone. And then somehow refine their composition of them telling him the story into what is the most linguistically perfect thing in Arabic. <laughs> when when he suffered crazy. ten years of persecution and like over ten years of persecution, another ten years of wars over the well, course of years, where did we get all that stuff about the persecution? Like in, in the Quran, yeah. tell me how you got the twenty years of segmented revelation, and it it came in chunks, right? And then all of a sudden, they're organized in a in a manner with no guidance of the organization. Rather, it's just his own thought process uh at a whim because he couldn't write so it's not like he could sit there and be like oh i'm gonna write this down and then edit my story to organize it in a in a perfect fashion and then it's gonna come out great and the last the last thing you would do is spread it around to different surahs as well you'd put it all in one place so, it, so right. you can make sure it makes sense right so none, none of it contradicts but so you're saying that uh, like everything that you you've just said about him being persecuted and all the rest of it like I didn't um, say yeah, these are from stories that are from later mm -hmm. like you, you, there's the um the Meccan surahs the so-called Meccan surahs which is where all these Moses stories all the Bible stories are in the Meccan surahs um they don't even mention um Mecca or or Muhammad even um so th there's no indication at all that this guy was in Mecca but You've got all these. He's clearly in an area where people know the Bible stories because he's telling telling well, Bible there's stories. There's no indication of him being in Mecca, bro. There's a whole historical and a biographical indication. You have remnants. Yeah, not not in the Quran. So and you deny you, you deny that the Prophet Muhammad was in Mecca. But you deny the Quran. Why would you care if it's in the Quran? If the Quran said a thousand times over, "Hey, Muhammad Isa son was in Mecca," you would just be like, "Oh, it's another story. He just made it up." No, he but, just said himself that it, he's in Mecca, and now he's in Mecca. When, when you when you read it, there are certain it get, the the Quran does contain information, and the information that's what it's telling you is he's in an area in the north of Arabia, where where Syriac was widespread. 
where people knew knew the knew the stories from the Bible, whether they were Christians or Jews or or whatever, they they were familiar with these stories, and he's just reciting stories that he's heard. Frank, I think I think you should go and write an academic book and see how far you get with it, because your history is really muddled up. Oh, not at all. You, you, you're coming with some new stuff. So go and no, write no. an academic book. And, uh, there are the references. <clears throat> and let's see how far are, you get with it. Uh, have you ever watched any scholar? Well, have you done any research with what scholars say about Islam? Islam? They're now starting to look into it. Scholars, this, is, this is widely known scholars. in academia. I think, that, I, think Ham, that, I think Hamza set us up here. Now, it's, it, it's widely known <laughs> like, that Syria go influence is in the Quran. No, no, no serious scholar takes that as uh, justification. <laughs> No serious scholar takes. I'm sorry, Sharif, but every serious scholar, every serious scholar. Okay, name me free. Okay, well, there's a there's a, a guy called a uh, Gabriel Syed Reynolds. He he's an academic in um, at uh, Notre Dame in, in the US, and he in, he he has a channel called um, Exploring the Quran and the Bible, and he interviews many. But you, you can see there are many interviews with scholars, uh, academics who are studying these things, and uh, like so many of them are, are Muslims and, and even it, believing Muslims. The only the only uh, argument that I've ever heard, which comes from some guy called uh, I can't remember Luxembourg or something like that, yeah, is not even his real name. He uses some pseudonym, and he wrote a book and he said originally the Quran was written in Syriac. And that actually it was the original place was the city of Petra, and uh, that Mecca was made up, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was made up, and that was it was a actually, creation. And he's generally considered a complete hack. And his no, 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 no. You're mixing up several position, things. Frank, I've listened to what you've said. You don't need to continue now. And his position that he's he's made uh, is not accepted by academia. It's considered the very fringes. It's not what's taught in the mainstream schools of the universities. It's something that is an interesting side point to say, look at this crazy guy like uh, who follows certain people like Patricia Crone and whatever in order to try to justify that. Yeah. But it's not mainstream and it's not academic. And, you know, you're, yes, you're, turning, around, look, you're turning around look, and saying, that... you're, turning around, you're turning around and saying that there's no mention of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran or is very little of it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even know that when the the pronoun, yeah, like, for example, you or have you not heard, it's actually referring to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's how it's understood. It's very clear in terms of the language. So he doesn't have to use the you know third person noun of the of Muhammad by which it's already referring to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah. So it's very clear. It's like for example, Surah Kawthar. Yeah, it doesn't use the word Muhammad in the surah, but it's known to be about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, because it uses the pronoun. So it's very clear. Like, for example, Surah Al-Fil as well, which is about the elephants and the elephanteers, the war of the elephants. And this is obviously talking about when elephanteers were going out as an army from Yemen to try and destroy Mecca. Well, hang on, hang on. Year, that, 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 very, that, that very story. story. I've not finished that, yet. That very Frank, story is taken that, from Frank, the Apocrypha. I've not, finished, Frank. I've not finished. I've listened to you literally for about 15 minutes, yeah? Surah Al-Quraysh which talks about the, the journeys of the Quraysh. You know, the Quraysh were the leading tribe of Mecca at the time. And it talks about their trade journeys by the very seasons. So it's, it's clear cut about the context, about the understanding that this is <clears throat> about uh, Mecca. This is about the Prophet wasallam. It wasn't questioned. You go to Mecca today, you go to Medina today, you can see the uh, archaeological evidence that exists you can go to Badr city today you can see you know the various areas in Tabuk etc in which you have archaeological evidence of the existence of Islam of the Sahab Zero. no there isn't in fact there's a friend of mine who's been a master no, but look, Frank, you can turn around and say that, but that's complete false, yeah? In fact, inside the Kaaba itself, there are etchings of the names of the companions and the names of the companions' children, yeah? You don't know this, do you, Frank? Do you know this? I don't you believe it's true. 
Oh, it's not true. Have you heard about this before? Um, no, you haven't. So you just thing is, you've just dismissed something without even knowing yeah, whether it's the car park was destroyed it's several times into your own narrative. That's the oh, reality. Of it. It the fact is this, Frank. The fact is this, Frank. Is that etchings. just because the Quran differs with the Bible, you have automatically taken the Bible to be true, and therefore, if it differs, yeah. whatever differs with it, it must be wrong and must be false and must be hearsay. This is what you're saying, and you know what it is? It's just lazy, and that's why. <laughs> like Hamza holds your oh, Hamza holds your incredible! You're incredible. That's your criteria that you're using to Wrong. adjudicate whether the Quran is correct or not, or the retelling of the stories are correct or not, because he's, you're using the Bible. So really, what you have to do is you have to look at whether the Bible is actually legitimate or not, because if yeah. you're going to use that as a criteria to judge the Quran, yeah, then you have to say whether your criteria is correct or not. Uh, you've got so many th things wrong there. But just back to the thing of the academics. Like I said, on, on this channel, um, Gabriel Side Reynolds, um, the, the, the channels exploring the Quran and the Bible, he, he interviews a wide range of academics. They've discussed Luxembourg. Three, and three, some of them. Name me three. Sorry. What? Name me three. Academics? Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't remember all okay. their names, but it's, it's you, you, you can look, it, it'll take you five seconds to go and look at the channel and just see how many how many there are. But numerous, like like you know, like dozens, dozens, and, and they all say that the that Islam did not come from the no. Arabian oh, Peninsula, I, that it came from the city of Petra, that the Quran. No, 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 you're you're straw manning. I'm not straw manning um, because that's what you just caught. Yeah, no. You just mentioned Luxembourg. And yeah. Luxembourg, that's his position. Is it not the, his position? The, peop the people he so interviews have... that type of position that claims that it's that the Quran is not in Arabic, that it's in Syriac, that the that the no, 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 you're, you're straw manning. Medina, yeah, that's a straw man Africa, argument, or that it's a straw man is argument. the figure of the Prophet, وسلم, which is what Luxembourg is saying, by the way. Yeah, that all of these things are considered fringe. They're not considered mainstream yeah. in Western academia. But irrespective of that, the point is, is this, it goes down to this issue, Frank. If the Quran differs with the Bible, does it make the Quran false in your view? Yes or no? Well, if the Quran dis disagrees with itself, when it, re when it tells this Bible story seven times My and man. each one's different and it actually contradicts itself, you I think that shows it. that the Bible story was the right one. You no, it doesn't actually. That question. doesn't even make logical sense at all. I, 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 I How can does give that you make some logical sense? No, let's let's focus on this because this no, is no, about actually, the no, I, I want to first. I want to first no, deal no, with no, your no, straw. No, no. Hold on, I'm not letting you pass on this. No, you're no, you saying, straw man me. You straw man me. You're saying this. You're saying this. You're saying no. You mentioned Luxembourg, by the way. Yeah. You're saying yeah. this. You are saying that if the Quran makes mistakes by contradicting itself, yeah, of the retelling of the Bible. Therefore, the Bible stories are true. Is that your argument? Um, yes, yeah. No, wow. it doesn't make it true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How because does it, make it true. It doesn't make it true. Okay. But before I discuss that one, I just want to go back. Could you straw man me on this issue of the academics? The, the academics that Gabriel Reynolds interviews, they have a wide variety of opinions. And most would disagree, most would uh, not agree with Luxembourg. But amongst the academics, there's a general agreement that there's a lot of Syriac input into the Quran, that, that Muhammad was drawing on Syriac stories. And in fact, like there are, I think there are 300 foreign words in the, in, in the Quran, and, and more than half of them are from Syriac. Even the word Quran itself is a Syriac word it, it, for a lectionary. And many of the stories have come from, uh, but there's a guy called Jacob of Sarug who lived a hundred years before Muhammad. And he would tell homilies, like retelling of Bible stories. And that's the kind of thing we find in, in, in the Quran. But so, as I say, there's a wide variety of, of opinions among right. the academics. Who is that? Who, who lived uh, the, but the who idea lived that it's from years? Syria so lived, is, is so why they're- a hundred years, Frank? Who lived a hundred years before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Jacob of Sarug. Where did he live? 
Um, in the in the north of Arabia. Which is where? Where about? Oh, um, well, I want, um, in the Bible, it's called Edom, but it's it's the, the southern end of, like, well, it's at the bottom of Israel, the top of Arabia, in that area. And right. I think he, well, he, he lived in Taruk. Right. And on which, what reference are you using in order to say that this person lived in this area? Um, so we're talking about the 6th century, yeah? Yeah. So we, who, who, which reference are you using? There are there are his homilies. Uh, there exist. Yeah, I'm talking. Which reference are you using? Which reference are you using? Which reference are people do academics use in order to say that this person existed? <laughs> they're, they're referring to the, the writings of Jacob of Saru. Which what is can I say? Where's, the re where's the reference? You understand what the reference is? The the actual oh. physical writings are not going to be there, are they? Okay. Or are they? Hmm? Where are well, the writings? They've got manuscripts. Where are the reference? Uh, they've got manuscripts from him. Where? So, when? Okay, show me where the look, manuscripts. Where are they held? Okay, look, I, I just quickly, I quickly Google Jacob of Zuru, no, right? Google. If you're going to bring this as an evidence, don't bring something where you haven't got the evidence to hand, and you're just trying to waffle and trying to blag a situation. Okay. Let this me is put this way: I'm, what I'm doing are is you, I'm just saying, are you prepared? To, are you going to say? I'll tell you what it is, Frank. What I find is so you get people that come on and they try to bluster and they try to give this fake impression that they're academic or they know what they're talking about. As soon as you start putting their feet to the fire, they start stumbling over the words. They don't know exactly what they're talking about and they don't have the references for it. Yeah. So this is what you're doing is you're trying to give this impression that there is homilies. Name me what give, give, recite to me one of these homilies. Um, Are you do, Googling do you want me to... Huh? You're yeah, Googling I am. It. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Because I, I don't have all these texts at, right at my hand. But I'm, I'm, just, but I'm well, telling you, 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 you look it up. You try to justify a particular argument and you start throwing around names and you try to talk about how, you know, <clears> uh, okay, the Quran was in Syriac. Yeah, and things like this. No, I'm, I'm, no it's not that the, the, no, it's not, the, no, the crime is not in Syria. And then try to give but examples and then try to use Luxembourg <clears> as an evidence to that point, and then claim when I turned around and said people like Luxembourg, and I mentioned that name as well, they are on the very fringes and they're not agreed upon by the academics. You turn around and say, no, 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 no. most of the academics uh, agree upon it. And no. then you admitted, and then you admitted <laughs> actually Luxembourg's position is not mainstream within academia, which is what I was originally saying, even though originally we were trying to disagree with it. And then prior to that, which you conveniently uh, try to move away from, is the fact that you made this logically fallacious argument that says that if the Quran makes supposed contradictions of a story of the telling of the Bible, that therefore the Bible is true. And I'm saying, look, you can't be that, you know, uh, unable to think critically to know that that is a fallacious logical argument okay. to claim the Bible is true because the Quran makes some retellings are supposedly, according to you, incorrect. Okay, I'll give you an example of what you can do. Get 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 Exodus, and get the Quran, and then start going through Exodus and ticking off the things which you find in one of those surahs. And like as I say, the the the, the seven surahs, which tell how the Moses surahs. Make, how does that well, make the the story in the Bible true? Well, like if you, if your starting point was none of Exodus is true, and then you, then you go through and you find. The, the birth of Moses. Oh, that's in Surah twenty. You you you, you find that he went to Midian, and that's in that's in several. How does that children. make the Bible stories true? Well, just as you go through, you find more and more. If you compare, just 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 get two columns, and you right. find this is it. This is in Surah right. whatever, right. and this is we in Exodus. We understand what you're telling us, bud. We we totally yeah. understand what you're telling us, but you're not addressing the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is how does it make the Bible true? I, we are, we totally understand your set of instructions. Well, okay, okay. I'll give you an example. Okay. Sorry, one second. No. I'll give you an example. Maybe it'll help. Okay, you. no. Let me, okay. give, let me give him this one example, please. 
Oh, if I God. read the book of Harry Potter and Harry Potter's parents passed away in Harry Potter, how does that make the Bible true? Okay. If I'm re- in fact, Morris, let me let me give you the. If I was no. to retell the story of Harry <laughs> Potter and I start making inconsistencies in Harry Potter, and it doesn't make Harry Potter true. <laughs> right. Okay. This, is right. What, this is what Frank's okay. argument I'll, is. I'll change what I said. I'll change what I said. Okay, it fine. doesn't. Right. It doesn't make the Bible true. It, but it shows that Muhammad believed the Bible was true. No. Wow. Yeah. You really? You just went from like one wild claim to like an, the most wildest claim ever, dude. Yep. And literally and, in the Quran, it says that the scriptures are corrupted. How could he possibly believe that the Bible is true? Okay. Right. The Quran never, never says the scriptures are corrupted. But okay. when you go through when you go through these surahs, you can see that he's drawing on this story which he believed was true. Because the like if he's quoting, if he's quoting huge chunks of it, so Frank, huge chunks understand? of it, then he's he's saying this story is true. Position? Do you understand our position about the Quran? Yeah. I, I, no, I, well, what is your position? No, no. Do, do you understand it? Do you understand the well, Muslim I, position? As I understand it, you you believe this was given to Muhammad by a an angel. The very no. word, the very words were dictated by an angel. Yeah, no. but who, where did the angel, the angels transmitting what? It, it's transmitting these words which have been eternally in heaven. No, who's who's the, the angels transmitting what words to the prophets? Allah, they were them. The very words of God. Right. I can't God is all knowing. Yes. You let, God I don't is know why you're the hook on the previous claim. It... Can I can I just ask him something? Yeah, it's okay. Just really quick, just before, we, just before, I just want to just make this final point and then I'll let John jump in, yeah? See, obviously, we believe that originally the Torah and the Injil were revelations given by God, the very same God who gave the Quran, and that the stories about Moses and about Joseph and about many of the prophets were also stories given in these books and also were described by these books not maybe the books that we have today because obviously they've got undergone changes but the remnants of those stories still exist which were part of the revelation so it's it's going to be normal and natural that if the quran is part of this lineage of prophets which taught is a part of this lineage meaning like moses and abraham and jacob etc noah all the way to adam and all the way up to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him there's going to be similarities in fact i would be even more concerned and I, I think it would be more of a problem with regards to the Quran if there was no similarities, because on the one hand, the, the Quran is saying that this is from God and these the same God revealed also to Moses and also to Abraham and also to uh, Jesus, alayhi salam, that suddenly there are no stories about this in the Quran. There is no, uh, you know, echoing and foreshadowing about the messages of the previous prophets and the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That would be a major problem. If, if that was the case, but it isn't the case. And what you actually find is this, and I think this is the problem with you, Frank, is this, is that you're not honest in your reading. Yeah, you're not <laughs> in your reading. I am very yeah. honest. No, you're not, because you made a... Right. You, you, you are not honest. Arguments. You've not read the Quran. You made, fallacious argu- you, made, you made a number of fallacious arguments, but you made a very clear fallacious argument to the point that once it was pointed out by Maurice, you had to turn around and say, yeah, actually, you're right. It was a logically fallacious argument. I shouldn't have made it. Yeah, It just shows you've not really thought through this point. Because if you if you think through these points, and if you understand the tafsir of the Quran and the tafsir and the explanations of these stories found within the Quran, you'll find that... The Quran is not copying the Bible. Yeah, it is. It's copying. That the Quran is correcting. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm going to make it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. crazy. And the Christians had. I'm going to make it easier for you. I'm going to make it easy for you, right? I'm going to do it, Hamza. I'm going to make it easy for you. <laughs> the um, I have to do that because Hamza's not here. That's Hamza's line. Um, you know, Frank, is, is the Bible the only historical document that speaks about the Exodus? Um, well, so you, it, 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 I'd say it is because the Quran is not a historical document. Okay, you know, put the Quran to the side. Is there any other uh, well, historical, I, you know, like, yeah. well, like Josephus writes about it. Yeah, like is, there any book, is, there, is there any other kind of apocrypha books that maybe speak about the Exodus? 
any other like scriptures that you don't regard as uh you know revelation from god things you think uh, scriptures you don't accept to so speak about the exodus <laughs> Well, I'm not sure what your question is, though. As I say, like Joe, it's, a simple, it's a simple it. question, Frank. It's basically, is the Bible the only historical uh, source of the Exodus, basically, or is there any other documents in history that have spoken about the Exodus or spoken about some of the biblical narratives? Well, the, well, the Bible's the only one that's from close to that time, but there are plenty of others which are. No, but there were some be, before before the Bible was compiled. There's obviously. Uh, scriptures before that, right? That, that also spoke about different historical events in the Bible. No, no. Uh, explain what you mean. No, well, I'm asking you. I'm, you mean you seem like you you've been doing research. I'm I'm asking you a question. Is the Bible the only? If I want to know about the Exodus, is the is only the Bible available today? You know what speaks about the Exodus. From the time of before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or is it, is it possible that there are other sources where you claim Prophet Muhammad took this from? Well, oh, so, sorry. Yeah, certainly um, the Bible is the only source which Muhammad would have had access to. How and there are. Uh, sorry? But what makes you say that? Well, because he's he's following that like there's so much that's directly from the Bible in in the Quran. But these other books that you don't regard as revelation, that also speak about biblical narratives. Which, which books? Apocrypha books. Things you know, many many different gospels, many different uh, ancient books which speak about different biblical narratives. You know, but you don't accept them as revelation. The the books we call well, you're the insisting that Muhammad should have had the Bible specifically that he was copying from a Bible specifically. Well, that's see, where he he's wasn't getting copying. These, that's where he's he, getting these 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 Christian narratives from. He he wasn't copying in the sense of writing out. He was he, he heard stories like other people told stories. He heard it and he repeated the stories. bro okay uh, and he made up stuff he so like in in some of the surahs like three of them when when moses does his um he goes before pharaoh and he does he does his trick with the the snake and the star the staff turning the snake and so on in three of them it says that the the magicians they were so convinced they effectively became it actually says we we submit they became muslims they believe in the god of moses that's in three of the surahs. The others say that they did that no one believed, uh, which is what the Bible says that you no know, one, no one know believed what the Moses. Irony is, dude. Did you know that Pharaoh himself believed but didn't submit? Yeah, yeah, and that's in Surah Ten. Okay. When, he, when he's so drowning, when he's drowning, he suddenly believes. No, there was another instance where he said, "Build me a staircase so that I can see the Lord of Moses." So why would he say, "Build me a staircase" if nothing was there? Well, that's a that's just another makeup thing. Um, that's in Surah. Oh, yeah. That's Everything in Surah 40. Is a makeup thing. Yeah, it I, is. What? Okay, dude. Yeah. So, so that's I in Surah 40. What blows my mind, the kid. <laughs> you know, what blows my mind is you have like so much time spent on literally confusing yourself, and here's the miracle of the Quran. Right. It's literally pushing people like you away from it. The why, defense why mechanism does, that's built where, in where does the staircase come from? He introduces it in Surah 40. Where does the staircase come from? He's a pharaoh. He can command people to build no. whatever he wants. Um, do, do you know which why, country Why is has, it made up, Frank, and the Bible which, story is not made up? Well, it, um, which country had ra large pointy buildings? Which, which, let me ask you a question. Which country? You yeah. mean pyramids? Yeah. So there's pyramids, he, he, there's pyramids literally across the across the globe. Yeah. So in, in Egypt, pyramids have existed across the globe. Yes, you have them in uh, South America. You have them all the way across China, Central Asia, Egypt. Yeah. So you've had pyramids throughout the whole of the globe. You, you don't understand my point. Histories before. You, you don't understand my point. In Egypt, at that time, there were pyramids. And suddenly you've got Pharaoh saying, telling someone to build me a tower that goes to heaven. 
That's that's just that's just made up by Muhammad or, or whoever wrote the Quran. I, 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 yeah, I'm not following Frank. I'm, I'm not following. I'm Muhammad. not following your. I'm not following your trail of thought either. You're completely missing the point. No, I think you are. Why why does that turn okay. up? That that All story turns up in only two point. of the seven spellings. Sorry, go ahead one more time. That story of the the tower, it's only in two of the seven surahs, which Fair which tell the story. In in the others, it says what that after after opinion? that. Why, why do you think Frank? Just really quickly, what do you know? Do you know? Do you understand the genre of the Quran in terms of why it tells stories? What what's the purpose? What is it trying to do? Well, I, I think I do actually. Really? What do you think then? Um, I I think the genre is storytelling. No, what what do you think the purpose is? Why does it retell the story? He's trying to show that he's one of a, a series of prophets. No, but why does it retell the story? The stories are not about proving his prophethood. Why is it retelling the story in different surahs? I, I, I really don't know. Okay. What, what, so Frank, why do you have to tell problem. it again this and again? Problem. This is why I'm saying you're not sincere in terms of how you approach the Quran. Because if I'm going to start to do an in-depth study of the Bible, what should I do, Frank? Um, read it and compare section with section. Is that it? Is that all I do? Is I read it and compare section with section? Do I look well, at scholarly discourse? Well, do I look at what the original audience understood from it? Do I look at a hermeneutical methodological approach to it? Or do I just I, read it in a translated I, form and compare chapter to chapter or section to section? Come on, man. This initially, is why you're not serious. You know, initially, you're not serious. You're not, you're not being academic. You're not being objective. <laughs> you're just somebody who is a Bible believing Christian who comes across the Quran and is trying to weaken it. And he's trying to probably do it for his own satisfaction and his own, you know, comfort, in essence. If I'm going to read the Bible, if I'm going to study the Bible, yeah, if I'm going to study church history as an example, yeah, I'm going to understand what. The church historians understand of church history. I'm going to look at what biblical uh, scholars look at this. I'm going to look at what the original audience, how they understood it, how it was received to them. Yeah, I'm not going to look at it from my, you know, Muslim t uh, tainted eyes to read the read the Bible. Well, actually, to try to understand we, have, we have a totally Bible. different approach. Try and leave, try and just wait, wait one minute. So the point being is this: is that. I'm going to try to understand it as best as possible to the point where I can steel man the argument, yeah, steel man the bib biblical narratives, yeah, and therefore, if I can do that and then still reject it, then I can have a particular objective and critical way. Now, you don't even know why the Quran. Now, you don't even have to believe the Quran is true. You don't have to believe that it is, uh, you know, it's it achieves the objective, but at least understand what the muslim scholars or muslims themselves say regards to why the quran retells stories you should at least know that if you're going to critique the fact that it retells stories shouldn't you no no if you pick up the bible like for the person who first comes to christianity right you pick up the bible you read yeah. it it's yeah. self-explanatory yeah, I, I when you, I pick up the as, Bible, I just read polytheism in the New as, Testament. As, well, that's I that shows because you've rejected God. You've rejected God's way. No, but, it's because it, that because it because according to you, it refers to Jesus as God. Yeah. Well, what you, you like? You quote. Show me where where the Bible says that. What that Jesus is God. So the Bible doesn't say Jesus is God. Show me where it says it. Are you Unitarian, by the way? Or have you just referred no, to the Trinity? <laughs> no, but, no, because you, you always straw man, make straw man no, arguments. I'm not making straw man. I do, believe, do you believe that the Bible, the New Testament in particular, affirms the, div the divine nature of Jesus? Yes, it does. Right. So I believe that's polytheism. Well, I, Muhammad right, didn't. If I read that, if I read that, Without what any mean, background knowledge or understanding, would I be correct what? to read that? That it's polytheism because you're why affirming do you do that, that two gods. And why do you do that? Why do you say, well, Muhammad didn't? <laughs> why, why do you say that? 
Well, because you, because I find m Muslims have these arguments and they're not found in the Quran. What? In the Quran, it literally affirms Tawheed and it literally says, do not say three. What do you have you read the Quran, bro? Like I'm really starting to wonder now. So do not say three. So that's a specific argument against the Trinity. But it's, is that saying is that de denying the divinity of Christ? Okay, so in Surah Maryam, when it says that he is a servant of Allah, when he says, Ana Abdullah, I am a servant of God, how is that? I, I ate, he was dependent on food. Hello? And when he tells you on the day of judgment, he's going to be asked, did you tell these people to take you as God? And he's going to say, Subhanak, no, like I, glory be to you, you know what I said? And I, I, I never said such a thing. So where, where, where is that? Well, Frank, Chapter Frank, it's, it's, it's in Surah 5, isn't it? No. It's in Surah 5. I think it's that. I'm telling you, it's in, it's, in, it's in Surah Maryam, bro. Chapter 19 of the Quran. But, but Frank, the point is, if I was to take the, the Bible and read it and just say to you, you know what? I agree with you. It says Jesus is divine. But to me, that just sounds polytheism. You would say what? I'd say read the Bible. <laughs> and it's polytheism if you believe that. But obviously, it's, you it, don't believe Jesus said that. that, that is, honestly, that's God. Christians were teaching that God is there is one God long yeah. before Muhammad turned up on the scene. Paul clearly There's teaches one God, one God. And how many and how many personhoods of God is there? It, the, the Bible doesn't talk in terms of like you, you, you're projecting, and you're projecting the later Bible theological words. In terms of personhood. So I cannot just simply take this is the point I'm trying to explain to you, Frank. If I'm trying to understand Christian theology, I don't read the Bible and that's it. End of. Uh, I understand it now. You've got to understand history. Uh, you've got to understand, you know, the various scholarships on the particular issue. Because just like you just said, Jesus doesn't say he's God in the uh, Bible. Uh, and neither what? does neither does <clears throat> the Bible and the New Testament talk about the three persons of God. Yeah. So I'm just saying is that you've got to have an approach where you try to understand it for the theological position, how they approach the text from the tradition. Yeah. And if you're going to refute it, you refute it within the tradition. Yeah. You you oh. don't do what you're doing, <clears throat> this messy, unacademic you know, really poor, shoddy type of approach where, oh, look, <laughs> it, this, that, no, is, look. that is what Islam is. That is what Islam is. It's very shoddy academic. Um, is it? What, what, look, when I, when I pick up the you Quran and know, I read... How can you turn around and say that is what Islam is when you don't even know why the Quran tell, retells different stories, of the retells the same story but different in different chapters of the Quran? How can you turn around and say it's shoddy? You don't even know the very basics <laughs> because, of the Quran. Because if, what? If, if the Quran was the word of God, I would expect this to be the perfect book. It doesn't require me to go and f go and look up a whole lot of different stuff written by other people it's to try and explain you, you why it to, seems so crazy. Think about it, but you have to think about it. You have to be critical as a thinker and you have to be sincere. Yeah. And to be quite frank, we've shown that you're not critical as a thinker. Because you were making a logical <laughs> argument. Yeah, yeah, no, you haven't. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're explain, kidding yourself. Explain, demonstrate to me how the Bible is a perfect book. Can you uh, demonstrate? But see, I, I come on Hamza's den to challenge Islam, and so I'll give you, I'll give you this example. Okay, in, so challenge in, it. Okay, so no, in, in the Bible, the problem, is, the problem is you come to challenge Islam, but you challenge Islam by making the Bible the standard by which you want to challenge Islam. So therefore, it always becomes a discussion about the Bible for you, because irrespective of what we say. See, I'm doing two things, to be quite frank, Frank, to be quite frank, Frank. The first thing that I'm doing is to show how you don't have an approach and a correct academic objective approach when it comes to the Quran. Are, are you an academic? Informed, you are you an academic? Approach, yeah, to be quite frank. You don't have one, yeah? I've said frank again. And the second thing that I'm trying to show to you is that you're just presupposing the Bible narrative to be true and everything in the Bible to be true and then using yeah. that as the criteria and the standard by which you now look at the Quran, yeah? This is the problem that you have. 
And so it's always going to be a case of one, to demonstrate your ignorant regards to the Quran, and therefore you don't have a valid critique because you just are ignorant here yeah, on the subject no. area. And the second issue is that then you have to look at your criteria, which is the biblical position, you know, the Christian position, and use and say, okay, is that the valid way to judge whether uh, uh, you know a true statement or a false statement is correct or incorrect if it agrees with the Bible or not? So you're going to have to go back to your criteria, yeah. And because I, you've I not listened, you've myself. not brought one argument. You've not. I've listened to what you've said. You've not brought one argument. I don't think you know how to construct an argument, actually. But you've not brought one argument against the Quran or against Islam. By the way, I, I just have to quickly correct myself. I said Surah Maryam. I meant to say this, this is incorrect. It's Surah Maida, uh, chapter 5, verse... Yeah, uh, that's exactly one. what I said. That's what I said. Okay, so so if you know it, then why would you... Then, dude... So, why? so th there you've got... You've got a story... This, this is the only story in the Quran about... Jesus as an adult man with his disciples. He's there. You've got this thing. He's, he's, they've asked him to bring down a table from heaven to bring food. So for a start, it's exactly the opposite of Jesus' teachings because Jesus said, don't concern yourself with food and eating and drinking. That's not what the kingdom <laughs> of heaven is about. what you're doing just then. Yeah, that's not, you're that's using a biblical narrative. Yeah. To judge just, whether yeah, Jesus exactly. would or would yeah. not have yeah. done this and therefore... Exactly. Exactly. If it so it's constructed. It's, it's, it's saying it's exactly the opposite, and suddenly, Frank, like Jesus, Frank, you, you're, you're. I don't know why you're doing this, bud. You literally asked because me your religion there. is just a total fabrication. Okay, it's fabrication. Okay, so hold on, hold on, bud. So you, when you and I were discussing it, you asked me where does he deny his divinity in the Quran. And I gave you the reference as to yep. where he denies his divinity. Now, somehow, you have switched it and moved the goalpost and changed the whole argument to... No, 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 no. I'm, okay. I'm just coming to the context. The context yep. is, he, here's the one place where Jesus is speaking as a man in the Quran. And, and Frank, he's doing, Frank, 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 stop wasting anyone's time. Goodbye. Love you, Frank. Honestly, you man. on purpose. <laughs> you did this on purpose, by the way. Uh, you, you could have consumed a whole cow by now, man. Well, yeah. <laughs>